How could this be happening? Not now. Not like this. You are about to die. Lying sick on a hospital bed, or maybe broken on an asphalt street, or possibly even plunging from the sky in a fiery dead spin. Thoughts race through your head at light speed. Your childhood, your funeral, your first love, your family. But there is one thought that snatches your soul in a vice grip. Regret. Regret for not doing all of the things you know you should have done. Quitting your meaningless job, working harder on the important things, traveling the world, starting a family, telling your loved ones that you love them. It's not the failures that haunt you. It's actually the regret of not even trying. Why did I waste so much time doing nothing? Watching Netflix, drinking my pain away, eating my pain away. On your last day, when you take your last breath, you will have regrets if you're not ready. This doesn't have to be the case though, and I'm glad you clicked on this video because this is your wake up call. There's this old Japanese movie called Akiru, and there's a YouTube channel named Old School Kevmo. I know they seem like they're from completely different universes, but there is a valuable bit of truth in their similarity. Let me explain. Akiru is about a Japanese bureaucrat who has all but given up on life. He has let society and his meaningless role in it consume him to the point where he is like an automaton playing out his pre-programmed actions. Even when he is given the opportunity to do something righteous, to help local kids improve their living condition, he defaults back to the safety of his endless paperwork and red tape. Old School Kevmo is a YouTuber who specializes in what he describes as stoner food, but he also makes traditional American dishes. His day job is being a chef for a college sorority, and he often makes videos of what he is cooking for the girls living in the house. So what's the connection? In Akiru, which by the way means to live in Japanese, the main character Kanji Watanabe learns that he has stomach cancer. Kevin of Old School Kevmo also revealed to his audience in 2023 that he was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer in his stomach. Kanji in the movie is devastated at first, as was Kevin, but here's the interesting thing. The movie Akiru is about how the main character finally finds purpose and meaning in his life after he knows he will die. Kevin, similarly, is thriving after his cancer diagnosis. It's not to say he's not dealing with difficulties, but he's uploading more than ever and seemingly happy. The burning question is how could this be? In fact, it's not at all uncommon for people to reveal that they become happier after they are given a prognosis of death. It's so counterintuitive that knowing you have a limited time on Earth, for some people, helps them focus on the important things and live a better life in the present moment. We're going to come back to this idea, but we first need to understand why so many of us are living these lives of quiet desperation in the first place. Once we understand this, then it will become more clear how we can start to break free from these shackles that make us live a life of regret. The term quiet desperation comes from a quote from Henry David Thoreau, the famous author. Most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Let's look at the original text because Thoreau goes into more detail and there is even more wisdom to be gained. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. From the desperate city you go into the desperate country and you have to console yourself with the bravery of minks and muskrats. The city here is contrasted with the country. There are two systems, essentially the mechanical and the natural. I'll expand more on this later, but the important thing is that the modern man finds no real comfort even when he attempts to break free for a while and go back to his natural roots. All that he finds is what Thoreau writes is the consolation with the bravery of minks and muskrats. What does this mean? Well, Thoreau was heavily impacted by something he learned about muskrats. A hunter once told him that muskrats, when caught in a trap, would often chew off their own leg to survive. When modern man goes into nature, he can only stare and wonder at the raw power of this place. He is so far removed from any type of courage to escape his own constraints that he must look on in envy, wonder, and consolation at this world that is now so different from his own. Our civilized world that has become so mechanical offers immense benefits, but at the price of our souls. We have obligations. We have bills to pay, mouths to feed, and status to uphold. What really matters is that we appear like a winner in life to others. 
To do this, we need a big house, a fancy car, cool clothes, and the list goes on and on. So how do we break free in practical terms and start on the path to living a life without regrets? You can't control me. You don't. Let's look at three ways people have historically achieved independence, and then we can more easily come up with some concrete steps. Kanji from Ikiru and Kevin from Old School Kevmo needed the shock of an imminent death to push them forward. Kanji eventually fought with the bureaucracy he was a part of to build a new park for neighborhood kids. After his diagnosis, Kevin began uploading more frequently and sharing his joy of cooking even more. It appears he also began spending more time with his family. The thing is that most of us don't have this extreme motivation of a looming death, but the idea of being reminded of your end, or a memento mori, is still a useful concept that we can use. So here's what will help you, because it helped me. Download this audiobook by Gary John Bishop. In the last chapter, chapter 9, he vividly describes the scenario of dying with regrets a lot better than I just did. Listen to this often for motivation. You don't know you're going to die in the next year like the movie Akiru, but you will die, and you need to think about this. Trust me, listen to this chapter over and over again. Another path to freedom is spirituality. If we truly believe there is more to this life than the superficial, then this can give us the strength to reject the traps of the material world. Krishnamurti, the mystic, gave this advice. But if you're merely seeking success, money, 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 power, position, status, then you are beginning with, the, with corruption. You might be poor. Be poor. Who cares? I really like his message, but I hear you. This mindset is for an enlightened sage. Most of us just can't all of a sudden not care about money and what people think about us. We still need to play the game on a certain level and be part of the system. Nevertheless, this is wise advice that we might be able to incorporate. No, you're not going to quit your job today or move into the wilderness, but Krishnamurti is a wise man. If you can be humble and not care so much about material things, then your chains will loosen. You'll have a bit more freedom to explore what truly gives you joy. Then there is the way of the wild man. This is an archetypal figure who rejects society to inhabit the wilderness and live on his own terms. Examples from mythology are Iron John, the Green Man, and Pan to name a few. There are also modern day examples of people that incorporate this archetype's energy even if they don't literally live in the woods. Some examples are Russell Brand, Julian Assange, and I would even say Elon Musk. Do you notice something about the modern examples? They are all highly criticized and targeted. You need to be ready to give up everything, which is usually too brazen for most. This is why a full commitment to the way of the wild man is not possible for a lot of us. The energy of the wild man, though, is something that can be incorporated into our lives, at least at some level. Be a little wild. Take chances. Express your true opinions. Do the activities that you actually enjoy, even if it seems crazy to others. Your last breath is coming. You feel it. Well, it's too late now, you think to yourself. I lived a wasted life, but so has almost everyone else. It just wasn't in the cards for me to do all the things I promised myself. Let's be honest, I never even promised myself that I would achieve my goals. I knew I never could. Wake up. You're not dying. You're sitting here watching this video, and you still have time. You will give anything to come back to this moment right now and make the changes that you feel are so impossible. Start small and grow. Take five minutes every day to work on that thing you've been regretting putting off. Express yourself authentically just once. Do it today. Also, instead of buying that next gadget, maybe use that money to help others. This is your wake-up call. Don't die with so many regrets. Do these things, and then you're on the path to living a great life. A life that you will be proud of when your final day comes.